I purchased this Halo Swivel Bassinet secondhand and found a way to remove all pieces of fabric to wash, excluding the mattress since that can only be wiped down. So here I show you how I removed all the parts to get the fabric removed from the bassinet. I removed the mattress, opened the slit that has the velcro on each end, there is a thick board material at the base of the actual bassinet, and with a screwdriver I unscrewed the six screws halfway. In my personal experience, it isn't easy to disassemble, but rather moderate. And with being gentle and having the right techniques, I was able to get the fabric off without damaging anything. Once all six screws were unscrewed halfway, I removed the bassinet from the metal base. Laying the bassinet on the ground, I removed the side panels which is located on each side of the bassinet. There are two metal tabs to push down on each side of the panel. And here, I'm going to be using a screwdriver to help me push them down. Doing this will lead to the next part to disassemble, which is to slide the sidebars out. This was a bit of a struggle for me, so holding onto the metal bar rather than holding onto the fabric will help with the removal of the bars. I had to remind myself to be gentle so that I don't rip any of the fabric, and I did the same on the other side. And again, to avoid damaging the fabric, I would hold on to more metal than I would fabric. And I like to hold on at the ends of the bar and I like to grip it as much as possible to get the bars removed from the holes. Once both sides are out, I was able to slide out the sidebars on each side. Next, I turn the bassinet to its side and remove the side panels. This part is simple because there are larger tabs as you see here to push down on making the panels easy for removal. So I'm halfway there and at the center of the bassinet there is a round plastic piece with three mini screws that need to be removed. I removed the round plastic part and three screws. It's important that I kept all my screws together and didn't lose any of them, so I put them aside in a safe area. As for the six screws from the beginning, I removed those as well. And these six screws, it's what keeps the fabric attached to the bassinet, so it does need to be removed, otherwise you can't remove the fabric. Now I need to remove the fabric and this is where it gets harder because the fabric needs to be removed a certain way in order to prevent damage. So when I remove the fabric, what helped me prevent struggle and tear is to line up the fabric where the side panel openings are. Then at each corner, I fold over the fabric and then at the left side, that's where I started on the left side of the sleeve, I gently pull back and pull down. The fabric then slips off and I'm able to remove the entire piece. Now 
it's all ready to be hand washed. Please check the description if you want to know what I use to sanitize and hand wash the fabric without damaging it. Once the fabric was air dried, it was time to put all the pieces back together. It's basically rewinding everything I did to disassemble the fabric. Putting the board back, I made sure the sticker side faces up and then insert the board into the fabric. Again, to help get the fabric onto the board, I made sure to line up the fabric with the opening of the side panel. This is important as it makes it easier to get the fabric onto the board. I did the same exact steps on the other side of the opening of the panel. Another tip that helped me get the fabric back onto the board was to start on one side. So here I started with the right side and I gently slide it back on. And then once the right side is on, I go to the left and slide it back on. Turn the bassinet over and at this step I needed to screw on the round plastic piece with the three screws. I made sure that the material was lined up with the screw holes. I didn't make any new holes, this is how the bassinet comes just as you saw earlier. Then with the six screws, I put them back into the bassinet. With the base that was removed from the beginning, I need to put the bassinet onto the round piece as you see here. The tip to doing this is to line up the two bigger holes that don't have screws, and then I was able to attach the base to the bassinet. Again, the two bigger holes should be lined up with the bassinet. Then I screwed the six screws in and attached the bassinet to the metal base and secured the Velcros. The bassinet and metal base also has a tab so I made sure it was locked in place. To ensure I had put everything back the correct way, the bassinet logo needs to be facing me and that is how I know it is the correct way. Then I inserted the side panels back into place. After the panels are back in place, I needed to put the sidebars in. So I used the letters to match at each end. So at each end of the sidebars, there are letters, you match it to the panel, like A, A, B, B, and so forth.
Another helpful tip when inserting the sidebars back into the side panels, you want to make sure that both ends of the sidebars are evenly lined up with both holes on the side panels. That way it is much easier to get the bars back into the holes. So both sides need to be aligned with the holes. And now I was back to my struggle of getting the metal tabs to be pushed down to insert back into the holes. So I used my handy dandy screwdriver and tried my best to hold on to more metal than fabric to push into the hole. I did leave most of this entire clip in so you could see that it does take me a few tries to get it back. And then once both sidebars were inserted, I finished with attaching the Velcro and that is all. According to what I read on the company's website, you can't wash the mattress, you can only wipe it down. So I actually did both a steam and wipe down and left the mattress to air dry. Again, if you want to know what I use to sanitize and wash the fabric, please visit the description down below. If you are still watching to the end of this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos.